Good morning, brothers and sisters. My talk today is on charity. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 8, we read, Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but in rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. I'd like to briefly touch on each of these values. First on Paul's list of the attributes of charity is the phrase, suffereth long, a phrase that of itself suggests the Savior's loving forbearance and mercy, as well as his great sacrifice for our sakes. The expression indirectly enjoins us to, a pa to pattern our lives and characters after him. We are to be forgiving and patient, to harbor no enmity and seek no vengeance, to be tolerant of the shortcomings in others, and to accept in faith the sometimes trying vicissitudes of life. Next on Paul's list is charity is kind. Baruch Spinoza said, Minds are not conquered by arms, but by love and generosity. By definition, to be kind is to be thoughtful, gentle, and loving. Third is charity envieth not. The philosopher Cicero said, A grateful mind is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all other virtues. When we envy the advantages of others, we forget the mercy the Lord has already shown us, and if we forget the Lord, it is impossible to have charity. Fourth, charity vaunteth not itself. C.S. Lewis once said, There is one kind of religion in which the more devoted a man is, the fewer proselytes he makes, the worship of himself. There's almost no one on earth who wants to be around a person who cannot think of anything but their own noisy, shallow ego. And, like envy, those who seek out the approval and praise of men inevitably forget to please the Lord. Fifth, charity is not puffed up. We all know about the pride cycle. The Book of Mormon is full of examples of pride leading people to destruction, and that's partially because pride prevents charity. And without charity, any organization or society in which humans must coexist fails. Pride is the downfall of the strongest individuals and the greatest nations. Sixth, sixth, charity doth not behave itself unseemly. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8-9 through 9, we read, Be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrariwise, blessing. In other words, people with charity act like it, and acting like you have charity can help you feel it for real. Seventh, charity seeketh not her own. In other words, rather than deliberately doing good for a reward, those with charity do it as an instinct because they can, not because they should. Eighth, charity is not easily provoked. People who go through life full of charity are peaceful and slow to anger, with a disinclination to contend with our fellow beings. Ninth, charity thinketh no evil. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7, we read, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. What we think becomes what we do. What we do becomes who we are. This is why it's so important to keep our thoughts under control. Tenth, charity rejoiceth not in iniquity. People with charity are not swayed by the lie of society that says you can find happiness in wickedness because they already know for a fact that this is not the case. Eleventh, charity rejoiceth in the truth. This one is kind of self-explanatory. Charity causes individuals to rejoice in truth, learning, and the gospel. Twelfth, charity beareth all things. Those with charity bear their own burdens with patience and the burdens of others with joy. They also bear the burden of other people's long, boring talks with grace. Thirteenth, charity believeth all things. Those with charity trust the Lord and believe in his gospel. They are unshaken and unbreakable in their faith. Fourteenth, charity hopeth all things. Our faith gives us hope, but hope also, in its peculiar fragility, is the foundation of faith. They are inseparably linked. Those who have faith must have hope and vice versa. Those who have charity must also have faith and hope. As vain as faith and hope are without charity, charity is equally vain without faith and hope. Fifteenth, charity endureth all things. Charity gives people the strength to endure anything others might do to them and the faith to believe the Lord will be with them in their trials. Last but not least, number 16. Those of you in Relief Society should be familiar with this one. Charity never faileth. This simple truth is the culmination of all of charity's virtues. 
though all the powers of hell may combine against you, there is nothing the adversary can throw at you or place in your path that charity cannot overcome. In Moroni 7 we read, Charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever. And whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.